Welcome to Comic Talkers, where comics is always the top of our discussion. My name is Brandon. And I'm Mary. And today we continue on with our 52 book club at week 38. We are 14 issues more down or to the end of the story. So fans, let me just tell you this. If you're here, you haven't watched any of our other episodes, you're not to where we are, go back. We don't want you to miss out on any content, what we've been talking about so far, everything. Um, how much we love Booster Gold, right? You know, how much we love the whole Renee Montoya and question dynamic. We love that. We love Black Adam storyline. So please, fans, go back to week one. Watch Hear it. Hear me go crazy about Ralph Divney every time he shows up on page. Yeah. And Oliver Queen running from Mary. I hear how Mary reacts to that all the time. <laughs> but fans go check it out we made a beautiful playlist from weeks one through 37 at this point now 38 so please go check that out so you can get called caught up to date with us um and also by also before we start please if you like this content you want more subscribe to our youtube channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss an episode and like this video we want to hear your comments but Without further ado, we're going to start this week off with Renee Montoya. As the last time we've seen her, um, she was transporting the question to Nanda Prabhat because they, she gets a package that feels like a message to her that she needs to take him there. And we see that he's got she's got morphine little shots on, on her to help him keep the pain down and everything. We see that he's still hallucinating. My man, the question is not doing well. And every person she sees, she's trying to ask, do you guys know where Nanda Prabhat is? You know, and of course, none of them are responding because either they don't understand or they don't know where they're asking or where she's going. And pretty much she states, I can save him. I have to get my friend to Nanda Prabhat. Now, she hits hikes with one of a truck to get up the part of the mountain. And we see that she's really struggling with him. Okay, she's he's trying she's trying to get him to eat everything he won't do it because if i can get him there in time then he won't die he'll be safe he he'll be saved i can save him please god let me save him and we see him still hallucinating calling her stupid girl that he doesn't it's poison that what he's getting it's you can see he's really struggling now i'm going to turn it over to mary as we go to Oolong Island. Will Magnus is back. I've missed him. Um, and the first thing that we see in Oolong Island is someone asking who ordered 300 thermometers. Now, now, Brandon, can you, can you tell me what um, element of the periodic table is typically in a thermometer? It is mercury. Gee, I wonder what Will's been up to. Um, <laughs> we find out that uh, Dr. Death has been... Um, just messing with everybody in terrible ways um he got someone addicted to cocaine um and will's coming through going the lead shielding is mine hmm lead hmm where have we heard lead and mercury before but he also got beans wonder what wonder what beans are kept in aluminum um <laughs> sneaky sneaky will magnus He's eating a lot of cold, uncooked cans of beans. And he's working on the plutonium man again. Um, what we know is, was Will's greatest failure. Mm -hmm. um, and we sort of see him having a very different stance on his medication here than we had seen him last, where it was literally being forced out of his hands and he was screaming and begging for them back. Now he goes, I was half alive on those pills. Lost in a world of fog and of boredom, terrified of my own ideas. He's not acting like himself here. And then Will's like, who exactly are we going to war against? I keep missing that bit. Um, and Dr. Mario is like, we have to make sure that you witness the ride of the four horsemen. History in the making. And Will's like, oh, the soul code that you gave me, I can improve on it. And I was like, it's not something you see every day, Will. A new world order being born in fire. Doesn't sound very good. And then we sort of see them getting to witness these cybergenetic four horsemen of the apocalypse, but we're only seeing three of them. 
and we find that one of them already rode out before the others. And we're starting to see the scientists, even the crazy woman scientist who was so influential in destroying Will's sense of self the last time we saw them is going, oh God, what have we made? Some of the scientists are reveling in the creation of destruction while others seem to finally have been grasping the reality of what it is they've been tasked to accomplish. But then we turn back to Charlie and Renee. Yeah, so we see on day three that she is running out of her morphine shots for Charlie. And of course, Charlie is still going berserk. Who who do you think you are? You know, you don't know nothing. And he keeps on saying the word butterfly. Now, it will play a bigger part later in this issue, so please pay attention. But, Renee, we kind of get to where she gets to a local city on day four, and she goes, I'm not crazy. I just want him to live. That's all I want. That's not wrong. How can that be wrong? So maybe it is selfish of me. I can admit that. I can admit that I don't want to lose another part, another friend. And we see... And she goes, I've lost so many friends. I don't want to lose Charlie, too. Charlie, we're in this together. Remember, you said we were in this together. I'm afraid of who I'll become without you. And we see that she's going through the city still asking people to give her directions to Nanda and Prabhat. She's still trying to understand where it is, everything, and trying to get back to it. So, so we really open with, of course, John Henry Irons. Um, and we see him and Gabe, who was sort of the whistleblower for um, LexCorp's Everyman Project that was talking to him, and Beast Boy, who is also there. And there are tests being run on um, someone named Brian, who is in the same rotation as Gabe on the Everyman Project. And we find out that Luther gave him the power of mechanism and then took it away and it killed him. We found out that he was holding up a collapsing steel beam when they started falling and his powers didn't fade as fast as the others. Um, someone says residual magnetic field or Dr. Midnight says or desire to save lives. Sort of that adrenaline rush that we see that allows people to like lift cars. And John is concerned about what happens if the Titans storm into Lex's building. What if he's able to shut off their powers as well? And then we see a golden butterfly, dragonfly type um, thing flit around and say, that's what I'm going to find out. Beast Boy goes, what? Who's there? And we see it's a bug that Natasha made meant to resemble a dragonfly. She says, this is a bug, or one of my bugs anyway. I built it. They have the phones tapped. They're watching me almost every second of the day. I know something's wrong, Uncle John. I'm going to get everything I can on Luther's research, and I'll send it over as soon as I can. She reveals that there's a hidden um, room off of his office that she's seen him go into a few times. She's going to try to get inside. And that she knows he has something that he doesn't want anybody else to see. Dawn wants her to leave the Everman Project right then and just come home. She says, I can't. Too many people have died because of this. John is concerned about what happens if Luther catches her. And Natasha, being a teenager, says he won't. And then apologizes for everything and says goodbye. And we see other members of Infinity Inc. walk by as Natasha is hiding around the corner. And then we go back to Charlie and Renee. Yeah, so... At this point, we're on day five, and they have she is using her last morphine shot to help out with the question's pain. And she goes, I hate the noise you're making, Charlie. The sound you try the sound of you trying to breathe, the pain of it. And she keeps on trying to tell him that we're almost there. And she goes, You've got to stay with me. It's not far now. Please stay with me. We're almost there. Go to day six, and there is a huge blizzard going on. And she is still trying to fight 
and keep on saying, almost there, almost there. And she tells her, shut up already. She goes, I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm so sorry. And when she tries to see if there's something that could help keep him warm or anything, here comes his mask out of the container. And she put only this thing, and she puts it over his face. And it's at least has provides some insulation, at least. And she goes, just maybe, or I think I made a mistake, Charlie. I think maybe, just maybe, I've gotten us both killed. She continues to drag, but she continues to struggle. And it gets to the point where Charlie flips over on the stretcher that she's trying to drag him on. And he's bleeding. She states, I don't know where I am anymore. I don't know which way to go. I'm lost. You're my sense of direction, Charlie. I don't know who I am without you. And she goes, don't leave me. Please, not again. She goes, and when she flips him over, that's when she sees the blood on the mask. She goes, hold on. Please hold on. I'm here. I've got you. She goes, I can't do this again. And she goes, please. And she starts to cry. Then all of a sudden, we hear a voice. You never answered my question. And she starts to flip out. And she goes, Charlie? She goes, get this thing off my face. Hard enough to breathe as it is. She goes, what the hell? Or he goes, what the hell are you doing, Renee? He goes, trying, trying to get us to Nanda Prabhat, trying to save you, Charlie. And he states, but you can't. I told you. Some things you have to accept. She starts to cry again. She goes, I can't. I need you. I don't know who I am without you. And he pats her on the face and says, it's a trick question, Renee. Not who are you, but who are you going to become? Time to change. Like a butterfly. Now, of course, right when the blizzard lifts up, they are at the gates, Ananda and Prabhat, with somebody walking their direction. This will end this week's main issue, but we do have an origin story we're going to go over, which is the origin of Red Tornado. Um, of course, written by the great Mark Wade, as always, that we love and enjoy, um, states the following. Thomas Oscar Morrow was a visionary, an inventor quite literally able to see into the future. By sampling and adapting tomorrow's technology, he specialized in committing crimes so scientifically advanced that there were not yet laws against them. Still, he had made enemies of Earth's heroes, so he invented a defender. An android designed to infiltrate the Justice Society and Justice League, and at Morrow's command, destroy both teens from within. In the Red Tornado, Morrow had created cold machine life but he had not foreseen how hungry it would be for a soul. Possessed by Ulthon, an air elemental for from a distant star, the android became self-actualized. Rebelling against his murderous programming and becoming a Justice Leaguer in good standing, Morrow had given the Red Tornado its sentence, but Ulthon gave it morality. With Bruce Wayne's help, the self deprecating tornado crafted the identity john smith in an attempt to feel more normal over time smith drew to him a family who recognized his machine origins but who believed in the man within their faith has not yet gone unrewarded having endured years worth of replacement bodies red tornado's soul has recently been merged with flesh and blood at least at last he is human both inside and out um, powers and weapons, the Red Tornado can create cyclonic winds, which, at maximum force, can level a building in seconds. His power allows him to fly through the air at great speed and to deflect approaching objects with ease. The essential storylines, of course, is Justice League of America 1, which is 2006, Crisis on Multiple Earths, Volume 2, and 52, and, of course, his alliances are to the Justice League of America. Um, this will end this week's issue. Um, this will um, conclude where we're at at this point. Let us know what you think about Renee's storyline. Let us know what you think about the question. And what do you think about butterflies? 
Um, let us know what you think about Nat's plan to try to uncover what Lex has been hiding. Um, also, let us know what you think about the Four Horsemen and where Will Magnus is at this point. Um, please tune in to next week where we go over issue 39. Um, so please check us out. If you like this, like we said before, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, um, hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode. Um, find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Comic Talkers, and also listen to our normal podcast, Comic Talkers, for great comic book and anime content on Spotify, Spotify for Podcasters, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And without further ado, my name is Brandon. And I'm Mary. May comics always be the top of your discussion.